All right, welcome back everybody to another edition of Chasing Ghosts. This is the video series that I do where I talk about those hard to find, those impossible to find books, those things you just don't see on the wall of your LCS uh, when you go and stop in on Wednesdays to pick up your new books. Now, I had actually filmed this for last week and I had a whole theme of just doing all these Kickstarter books and uh, I just didn't like it. I, I don't know, just something about it. It just didn't play out well. So that's why you didn't get Chasing Ghosts last Tuesday. And you got that little clip show of the High Republic first from our uh, Dark Side show, the Tales from the Dark Side Star Wars show last Tuesday. Hopefully you guys uh, enjoy that. I see plenty of you guys watched it, but uh, I am back with another Chasing Ghosts. And while I'm going to do a couple of Kickstarter books, I got a couple other books to mix in as well. So this is going to be another ra random hodgepodge uh, episode of the series. So hopefully you enjoy that, as well as all the other content here on the channel. And uh, please let me know what you think in the comments. Like, subscribe, hit the alert button. Keep telling your friends so we can keep growing this thing. And uh, yeah, and if you're interested in the merch, please check the links down below as you can get stuff on uh, my TeePublic account or on renovision.com and get yourself some cool stuff. Again, if you're interested. That being said, uh, I appreciate everybody who has already uh, purchased shirts and glasses and fanny packs and all the other weird merch that is available out there. I really do appreciate it because, again, it does help us you know, keep this thing rolling and keep this thing uh, moving forward with keeping the lights on and everything. Again, much appreciated. That all being said, just hang on for a few seconds after the intro, and I'll be back with this week's books. All right, so as I mentioned in the open, last week I had done a whole episode based around Kickstarter books. I did that for uh, two reasons. One, I had uh, bought into that to Muffy the Pimp Slayer Kickstarter book because I thought it was kind of interesting. And uh, in addition to that, I actually sold a Kickstarter book that I had an extra copy of, and that was my extra copy of Pop Kills number four, this huge cover that I will be talking about in just a second. Uh, I didn't want to cover the book while it was available for sale because, again, to be completely transparent, I do occasionally sell comic books and I don't want to be talking about books while I have them out for sale. So I waited until it was already sold. So now I can talk about it because now that that sale has occurred. Again, complete transparency out there. So that all being said, our first book is going to be this Hughes Pop Kills 4. Gorgeous, gorgeous cover, and a really tough book if you are an Adam Hughes collector like myself. Uh, thanks again to Chris Nelms for reminding me when this Kickstarter went live because I had forgotten about it. Uh, there was a little bit of a gap from uh, Pop Kills issues, I think there was one and two, and I think there was a gap before they just rounded it off with uh, issues three and four together. So that little gap made me forget about it. But thank you again, Chris Nelms, for reminding me because that's how I got my copies. Now, this book, again was a Kickstarter book from uh, earlier this year, January 2021. And uh, the way that you were able to get this cover, because this is not the regular cover for the Kickstarter edition, you had to do special variant cover editions. You had to pledge $60 to the Kickstarter to get both the Bill Sienkiewicz number three and this Adam Hughes number four, along with the, like the digital copies and whatnot. So you had to put in 60 bucks to get these two comics anyway. Now, you can look and try to guess at how many copies there might be out there. Again, you're just going to be guessing because if you go to Kickstarter, they show how many people buy into these different, uh, different, you know, tiers, different thresholds. So you can see there were 157 backers for this pop kill three and four variant covers like these two 157. So we know there's at least 157, but that wasn't the only way to get them because there was also a master set that you could get by getting a full cover set. If you pledge $175, and there was 91 people who did that. So now we're looking at over, you know, about like 250 uh, thereabouts total. Now, is that all of them? No, that's still not all of them. Because then there was a monster cover set where if you pledge $400, you can get some. But there was only 15 backers for that one. So again, we're still talking very, very small numbers here. So if you add up all those numbers, we can estimate the print run around 273 backers to get this cover. But there's a but here. 
we don't know how many were printed because uh, when I placed my order, they did ask you if you did want to purchase any extra copies of any of these other covers. And I was able to buy an extra cover of the Adam Hughes, I believe for an additional $30 or thereabouts. So uh, that's what I did. I bought two Hughes. Thankfully that I did because I was able to sell one of them uh, at a nice little profit for myself. And I, as you can see right next to me, I do have my 9.8 uh, that I'm keeping. That's just mine. That's not going anywhere. That one's just for me, for my Adam Hughes collection. Now, if we want to see what's actually in the sense, and since we have no real solid hold on what the actual print run is, we can see that at least in the census, there's about 40, 40 copies almost. There's 39 copies, 37 nine eights, mine being one of them, a 9.6 and a 9.4. Now, this is a gorgeous, apart from being a gorgeous cover, like the paper stock and the paper quality on this is fantastic. Like this cover is like a thick card stock. It's like, it's thick. It's a little bit glossy in parts. It's like glossy and matte finished. Uh, it's a little bit textured. It's a very, very nice cover. So uh, if the thing gets bent though, if there's any defects, you're not gonna be able to press this. But since it is such a nice thick cover, I think that's why you're getting, you can see so many nine eights is that, uh, it's generally going to hold pretty well. So unless you drop this thing or something happens to it, uh, it should be in you know, pretty good condition. Now, if you're curious about what's out there for this book, there are two copies out there right now, two nine eights, one asking for $2,000 and another asking for $2,500 with 29 watchers. So a lot of eyes on this book with 29 watchers. And those are some steep prices. And I, if I didn't sell my raw, I might consider selling this thing, but now this is the only one I got. I can't. So maybe I should have kept the raw and sold the nine, eight. I don't know. Or maybe I just should have submitted the other nine, eight, uh, other, other raw copy to try to get another nine, eight. Cause again, it's a, it's a pretty sturdy book, but what are you going to do? Uh, what's done is done. Hopefully uh, the purchase person who purchased my copy enjoys it as much as I enjoy the one that I did keep. Uh, and that being said, we'll look at what sold recently at this and uh actually you, you can see that's actually my my sale there at the top there i listed it raw for a thousand dollars took best offer and uh, uh accepted 800 so again complete transparency i'm telling you what i sold my copy for and you can see other copies that sold uh 475 dollars at auction uh nine eight sold for 840 dollars with 13 bids uh best offer on that nine four that link loan nine four took a best offer for se on 750 dollar ask and uh i think there was a couple more yeah, another 9.8 sold for a little over $2,000 in October. Another 9.8 for $850. Another raw best offer on a $600 ask. Another 9.8 for $860 at auction. So there are plenty of copies of this that are actually sold. And uh, look, we got more. Raw is $400. 9.8, $1,400. $1, raw on $600. Raw $500. So very, very pricey book and not easy to come by. But it does look like there's a lot of turnover on this book. Now, there's only two out there right now. But you can see we, we got a dozen dozen sales over the last couple of months. So uh, it, this book does sell generally when it goes up for sale. Granted, the two that are up there right now are, are pretty pricey. But as you can see, one nine eight already sold for two grand. So who knows? Maybe we see another very soon. Again, it doesn't matter anymore to me because this is just my copy. So it's nice to see it, it is valuable. But I just like the cover and I'm just keeping it for myself. But that all being said, uh, Let's move on to the next book. The next book is another tough one, and I unfortunately do not have this one. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous art germ cover. Uh, this is from November of 2018, and this is also uh, a Kickstarter. This was uh, a very rare and tough, tough book to get. Now, when we look at the uh, Coffin Comics, what they put out there, there were uh, 10 golden tickets that they put in there because the actual the first cover that I showed you was actually a metal cover. And that was a metal cover that was extremely limited to, I think, about 13 copies. Coffin Comics put 10 golden tickets, Willy Wonka style, out there. And they were randomly added across all the tiers for people to get that extremely, extremely rare book. Uh, so 10 golden tickets for the rarest art germ ever because there's only going to be 13, as we'll get to in a minute. You can see down there at the bottom, it does say limited to only 13 copies. So... Uh, Ten were given away, and then three were probably kept by the, uh, you know, by the owners and the and the publishers, just so they had copies of this gorgeous art germ cover as well. But in addition to the gorgeous metal cover that was limited to only thirteen, there was still the ultimate nightmare set, which was an eight hundred dollar pledge, got you a set of three exclusive covers, 
three, a Legend Edition, a Noir Edition, and a Hall of Foil Edition. Now, this set was limited to only 77 copies. So there's 77 of each of these books because they came in three, you know, three books in the set. So 77 sets. These were all, to, you know, meant to be kept together, but people have broken them up as you are going to see as we see uh, some sales going forward. As I just noted and laid out there, we don't really have to go off the estimated print run because we know there's 13 copies of the medals, 13. And then there's also 77 of the sets. So there was the, the Legend Edition. Actually, I think this is the Hall of Foil. So, you know, again, shiny hologram, like foil, a uh, little bit of a color change. Uh, the Legend Edition is here. I think the one here with the trade dress, which is it's the same art. It, again, it's the same art on all these covers as part of the set. It's just different editions, different versions. And then there is the Noir version, which is close to a black and white. Well, basically a grayscale uh, version, which all, all gorgeous covers. Gorgeous, gorgeous art. Love to have them. 77 copies is not many at all. And an $800 buy-in to get that set was not cheap to start. So just keep that all in, you know, in play when you're figuring this out. So as I said, 77, set of three, only 77 sets. What's out there? If you want to go find this book, uh, any of these covers, whether it be the metal or one of the three from the sets, the, there's none right now when I went to look. The, the last time I went to look, there was none out there. And uh, yeah, so nobody's selling. And if we want to see what actually has sold, a couple have sold because again, look, there's one of the sets. Somebody sold a set in September for 950 bucks with one bid at, at auction. And then there's a couple of 98 SSs that sold. So Signature Series 98s, it looks like a hollow foil edition for about 1750 and then $1,200 for a noir edition. Uh, one bid uh, in also in September. All three of these sales were in September. Haven't seen anything since. Definitely, definitely a hard to find book. I mean, there's none out there right now. So I don't know. Just something to keep on your radar. I'm not to say you're really going to find some. This isn't the type of book you're going to stumble across in your, your shops. Like the Kickstarter books like that are generally things that it's mostly online. Or maybe you hit see them at a show, but they just don't usually find their way into LCSs because, again, just the method in obtaining them isn't your regular Wednesday warrior pickups, your diamond distributed books. These are getting directly from the publishers of these Kickstarters. Like it's it's a whole different it's a whole different venue. It's a different ball game. But that all being said, I had a couple of more Kickstarter books, but eh, they weren't as interesting on second look. So I decided, you know what, I'm just going to stick with those two Kickstarters and we're just going to do some other stuff. Moving on to our next book, we have uh, a suggestion, a suggestion from one of our viewers, friend of the show. Uh, Darth Lopez actually suggested uh, this Brooks cover a while back for Psylocke. And uh, yeah, I've had it. I've had it in the list. I've had it in the to-do list for a while now. Hey, figured now's a good time as any to get to it. So Darth Lopez, here is your Uncanny X-Men for this gorgeous, gorgeous Mark Brooks variant. Uh, I do like this cover. I do not have this cover. I kind of wish that I did. But who knows? Keep my eyes open. Maybe I can come across one. It's a somewhat recent from December 2018, but this is a one in 100. So not a lot of shops are going to have this. I mean, not every shop orders 100 copies, even of a title like Uncanny X-Men. That's, that's a lot of copies. So a one in 100 is going to be a little tough, tough to find. Now, we look at the whole uh, print run here, the estimated print run of about 59,000. That would give us uh, about 591 copies of this one in 100 incentive which again is not very many that's not a lot of copies if we are uh being realistic here so we'll see we'll see we'll see if we can get lucky and find one of these but if you want to see what's in the census uh a decent amount out of that 591 we got 82 in the census with 52 nine eights 21 nine sixes and then a, a few others scattered throughout those uh you know a little bit of a lower grade and if you want to see what's out on the market, if you want to go shopping for one of these, well, there are a couple copies. There are copies to be had, for sure. 9.8 is going to run you about $900, $800 in a, CB, a CBCS, if you want to go that route. And uh, yeah, a 9.6, 200 bucks uh, starting at auction. Who knows where that thing will end? No bids right now on that, or at least at the time when I took this snapshot. And then you can see there's another 9.8 down there at the bottom also, uh, a grand. So not a cheap cheap ask, but those four copies all graded are out there. So there's no raw copies to be had. And that's generally what I like to pick up. I like buying raws because, uh, apart from paying the premium of a graded book, uh, 
I don't know. I'd rather take the chance uh, on a cheaper version and getting the raw, making my decision of whether I think I should submit it or not. And uh, yeah, that's just how I play it. But you guys do do what you like. This is what's out there. If you are interested, this is what you got to work with. And if you want to compare it to what's actually sold recently, well, the market will tell you that 9.6, best offer on 350 bucks. Uh, raw, 285 accepted a best offer. And then there was another Raw all the way back in August that ex you know, sold for $295. So this is like, a, I don't know if I were to guess the main, you know, $250, $300 Raw book or 9.6. So those, uh, you know, 900 and $1,000, 9.8s aren't crazy priced. I mean, they're expensive. Don't don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that's not expensive. I'm just going uh, in relation to uh, prices. Well, it is what it is. You're going to pay a premium for 9.8 no matter what. That's just how things go. People ask ask for that premium, and it's up to you whether you want to pay it or not. So this is definitely a cool book, one I do not have. I wouldn't mind having. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'll be vigilant. I'll keep my eyes open. Maybe a cheap copy will, uh, you know, come across come across my eyes, but most likely just like that Spider-Gwen uh, Inyuk Lee that I passed on a long, long time ago. These 1-100s are books I generally don't add to my collection. Just, I don't know. Things just never meet up. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, moving on, I got another book to cover, and this is going to be Ms. Marvel number 12. Now, there are a few covers for this one, for this uh, Ms. Marvel. This is uh, the 1 in tw 25 incentive variant here, or one of the 1 in 25 incentive variants, I should actually say. This is from October of 2016, so this is a five-year-old book now at this point. This book might... Uh, might come into play in your head because you might remember that this issue, even the regular issue has become sought after because it's the first appearance of red dagger. So with a lot of a speculations, he might show up on the Ms. Marvel show, whether it be this season or a subsequent season, red dagger first appears in this uh, issue 12 of Ms. Marvel from back in 2016. So that could be why this is ringing a bell. If, uh, if it sounds familiar, even if this cover might not look, look all that familiar, but Estimated print run on the regular issue of uh, a little over 28,000. So the one in 25 is going to have about 1,100 copies thereabouts, a little more. Now, how many are in the census for this one? This is, uh, I think it's J.G. Uh, Jones. Is that a J.G. Jones cover? Uh, but it's got about 28 copies in the census, 19, 9, 8, 8, 9, 6, and then it looks like a random 9, 2 uh, mix in there as well. So that's what we have in the census for this particular cover. Because like I said, this is one of the one in 25s. We'll get to the other one in a second. What's listed for sale on this cover? Uh, well, this one, you know, it's out there. Nine eights, about four fifty, four seventy five. There's three hundred and seventy five dollar raw, where it's paired with I think that's the one in ten cover uh, with the Ms. Marvel, kind of like a design. You can see the mostly stark white. And then look, there's another nine eight down down at the bottom there. That's only three fifty. So three fifty to about four seventy five is that nine point eight ask. And we got some more. We got some more Raws, all about $250, $250, $250, and $200. So, not cheap. Definitely not cheap for this one in 25. And if you want to see what the sale prices are for this book, well, we don't have any. We don't have any in the last three months, so I can't tell you what the market has actually been paying for this book. So, somebody's going to have to buy one of those books that's out there and set that market, whether it be on a best offer or on one of these prices that are being asked. And then we'll know. But as I mentioned, there was another one in 25. And this one also got a lot of interest, especially with all the Black Widow rumors over the last year or two as the movie was delayed and delayed. But this was the Red Widow cover. I mean, she, not inside this book, but just for whatever reason, they decided to put this Red Widow on the cover of Ms. Marvel number 12, one, in 20, one of the one in 25s, because there was two. Again, this was a uh, 125, October 2016. Same overall print run, 28,000 thereabouts. And since it's also 1 in 25, same estimate is going to be about 1,100 copies of this. And this one, in the census at least, has a little bit more at 54 with 4398s, 796s, and then a few others kind of rounding out that 54 number. But this one, on the other hand, isn't as easy to come by as the other 1 in 25, as there's only one out there right now, and it's a raw asking $475. Now, there actually was a second listing, but I'm not counting it. The reason why is because of the damage copy. There was a damage copy, I think, listed in the UK that was asking, uh, uh, I can't even remember, it was under $100, but there was a, a tear on the back, so I just didn't even want to count it. It's just, it's just going to mess up the whole thing. It, it's a damage copy. I mean, somebody wants to buy it, you know, 
all, by all means, go ahead, go for it. That's a, if that's the kind of thing you don't mind collecting. I don't mind buying a damaged copy of certain books at times, but uh, it's got to be something I really want or at a price that I just can't say no to when figure might as well until I get a better one. But I didn't want to include that in our uh, in our little mock up here because again, damaged copy, it just not apples to apples in for most of us. So what actually is sold for this book then, uh, as we only got that one out there, there was actually only one sell, sale as well, way back in August, 300 bucks for another raw. So no graded copies moving, but uh, we do have the raw. So definitely, definitely interesting. Uh, and uh, that was it. That's all I got. Uh, I know it's a little bit of a short list. Uh, I might have taken a little bit of time going through it, but that's what I got for you this week. Hopefully you enjoyed that. And uh, let's go with what we, what we got here. As you know, what I've been doing lately, I've been just kind of just seeing what's out there on the market. What can you get? And while last week when I did my initial filming of this, I had pop kills as a ghost because there was only that $2,500 9.8. But when I reevaluated and checked, you know, listings for this week, there were two as that second one for two grand was added. So since there are two and I think about four and then I think another four or eight, there, there's copies of all these, multiple copies of all these. So I can't call them ghosts. We're just going to call these ones hard to find, even though I had that pop kill as a ghost last week. Now there's two copies. And like I said, a dozen sales over the last three months. It, it's just an expensive book. So you could say all of these are hard to find, but expensive. So, that would leave us with our other two books, The Lady Death, that Kickstarter, which is extremely limited, and then the other one in 25 for uh, Ms. Marvel number 12, with only a single copy up each. Well, actually, no copies of Lady Death and only a single copy of Ms. Marvel, and also expensive. I'm going to call these two ghosts. I don't know. That's just my gut feeling on it for this week. Let me know what you think in the comments, whether you agree or uh, disagree. Because like I said, I just can't count. I couldn't count that uh, damaged one, but I don't know. Still having fun doing this. Hopefully you're having fun going through these books uh, with me, whether they be hard to find or ghosts. I know ghosts is a term that gets thrown a lot around, thrown around a lot, just like Grail and more more often than not key. And uh, I don't know. It's just the terminologies we use. So let me know what you think in the comments. Like I said, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Keep telling your friends. Let's keep growing the channel so I can keep doing some more giveaways. Check out the merch down below if you're interested. Help us keep the lights on. And uh, yeah, I got some more stuff coming for you this week. Something on Renovision every day. At least one show a day, whether it be live or something recorded. And uh, hopefully you guys are still enjoying the content that we're putting out there. Because uh, I'm still having a heck of a lot of fun doing it. And with that, I'll see you guys very soon with some more stuff.